Here is my buddy, Mr. Crippen. Anyway, what I've got for you tonight is a drivability case study class, and what it's really going to get into is thinking and diagnosing. We've got about six different case studies we're going to do. They're going to go anywhere from ABS to CAN, network issues, all the way back to 1990 and a, a couple related issues, and information being transferred out to door modules, chime modules, uh, things like that. And a lot of cars will have all three. And when you guys are checking these module statuses, which again we'll get to, cars will have multiple protocols on them. And sometimes you have to ask more than one protocol depending on what computer you want to look at. Okay, here's our case study. If you know this one right off the bat, then just hold and let the other guys work through it. This could just as well be a Volvo uh, as a Lincoln. It really doesn't matter. So 2009 Lincoln 3.9 liter, the symptom is a no start, okay, that's, that's a symptom you can duplicate. It has a P1233, okay, which means obviously we're digging into some OEM stuff there, it's unique to this particular system, and it says fuel system disabled or, and I want you to underline offline. Because what does that tell you right there when you read something and it says it's offline? All right, this was 2001 Volkswagen Passat 2.8 ATQ. By the way, with VWs, this is God, this engine number for them. What I've seen with uh, our scan tools and stuff, if you know where the engine number is, that's really helpful when you're into Volkswagens. It's on the engine, but another place you'll always find it, unless the car's wrecked or something, spare tire compartment uh, to the side on a piece of paper. So the ATQ, AEG, AWR, that tells a lot about the car. Stored diagnostic codes, DTCs, and then your published uh, circuit diagnostics. And then the last thing, if you have a DTC, like that mass airflow sensor on that pl plugged Explorer exhaust, don't immediately condemn the circuit. 